Welcome back to Cord Cutters LI, where we help to save you money on your cable bill. The most popular media player for streaming devices like the Amazon Fire Stick, Android, or Google TV just released a brand new version. That's right, Kodi version 20.3 Nexus is the latest stable release, and I'm here to show you how to get it and install it on your Amazon Fire Stick. But I'm not going to stop there. In some of my previous videos, I've had a few people in the comments asking me, now that I have Kodi installed, what do I do with it? So in this video, after I show you how to install the new version of Kodi step by step, I'm going to show you how to set it up to play all your movies over your home network. You'll learn some of the reasons why Kodi is the best media player available for all your streaming devices. If you're new to the world of Kodi, prepare to have your mind blown. So if you're ready to see how to install the world's best media player and take it to the next level, grab your remotes and let's go. Before we get started, put your remotes down for just a moment while I get this out of the way for YouTube's sake. This video will show how to install this media player on your streaming device. It may do a better job of it, but it's no different than any other media player by definition. Just like Microsoft Media Player, for example, or even a web browser, you can play your own media with it, you can access media with it. I am not showing you how to get free movies with it. I am not showing you how to get free sports with it. I'm not showing you how to get anything free with it. I am showing you how to install the media player called Kodi version 20.3 Nexus and how to use some of its features. So with that being said, pick those remotes back up and let's get ready to learn. Okay, so here we are on the Amazon Fire Stick 4K Max second generation. I've just checked for updates and I'm all up to date, ready to install Kodi on this device. So before we do that, we need to go over and check a setting. So let's go over to the gear and go down to My Fire TV and let's go into developer options Go down to install unknown apps and where it says downloader make sure that this says on if it says off like this just go ahead and toggle it back to on and then you can hit the home button and we can get started so we're going to be opening up the downloader app now where it says enter a url or search term we'll put in the address to my website which is cord cutters li or you can put in the short code eight nine three six four go down and click go after just a few seconds, that's going to redirect you to cordcuttersli.com. It gives you this time just to make sure that you didn't make a mistake while typing in that number. When you get there, hit the menu button. That's the one with the three lines on the remote two times. That changes it to full screen, so it's a little easier to navigate around. Next, we're going to go over to the menu on the left, click on that, and go down to Tutorials, and click on it. You'll see lots of apps here on the Tutorials page, but we're going to be scrolling down and looking for media players which is right here and you will see Kodi 20.3 Nexus 32-bit recommended and click on that just updated this week you can scroll down read up a little bit about it and towards the bottom of the screen you will see this download button scroll over there and click download Move over, click install. When that gets finished, just go ahead and click done. Don't click open just yet, and I'll tell you why. This lets us delete the installation file because we no longer need it. So let's move over to delete, and then move over to delete once more. Now we can go ahead and hit the home button. We're going to want to have Kodi up on this favorites bar. So the easy way to do that is to go over to the apps button on the far right, click on that. Move to the left, because that'll bring us to the last thing that we installed, which is Kodi. And then hit that menu button again on the remote, and you'll see a thing that says move to front, and click on that. You'll see Kodi moves to the front of that list when we hit the home button, and there it is. Let's go ahead and open up Kodi. When you do, you'll see this message letting you know that it needs a permission. Click on continue. On this prompt, you can click while using the app, and then on this prompt, click Allow. Without doing this, Kodi won't work properly. After just a couple of moments, it's ready to go. All right, so we're not gonna do anything in Kodi just yet because the next thing we're gonna do, let's close this. The next thing we're gonna do is actually go over to our computer and set up the sharing for where we have our movies stored. Okay, so to play the movies that I own over the network, 
uh, using Kodi. I'm going to show you on this laptop. This is just a small demonstration just to show you how to do it. Um, if you want to go crazy like I do, I have like tons and tons of movies and TV shows on a NAS or a network attached storage device. If you want more info on that, let me know. Put some comments down below. But what I've done here for this demo is I have a handful of movies that I've copied to this movies folder on my laptop. This is a laptop that's on the same network as my Fire Stick. I have, say, 16 movies here. They're all in individual folders with the name of the movie and the year that it came out. If you're not sure how to get your movies, like your DVDs and whatnot, into file form that can be read by Cody, I'll put a link to a video below for a friend of mine and fellow YouTuber, Stu Tech, who has a bunch of videos on tech reviews and also uh, he is the authority, pretty much, on um, how to rip uh, DVDs and things. In fact, if you Google how to do that, his name is going to pop up. So anyway, back to this. We have 16 movies saved on this laptop in a folder called Movies. To be able to access this on Kodi, we need to share this over the network. So there's a few things that we need here. The first thing we'll need to know is the username and password that we use to log into this laptop. That's important. The next thing we're going to need to do is get the IP address of this laptop. So the easiest way to do that is just to go down by the bottom and type in CMD in the search window. That'll, co that'll open up a command prompt. Then just type in the word IPCONFIG and hit enter. Right down here where it says IPv4 address, you want to write down that IP address. In my case, the IP address is 192.168.7.139. The IP address will certainly be different for you in your house. So now that we have that info, we can close that screen. Now let's right click on our movies folder, wherever it is on your computer. I have it on my desktop, but it won't necessarily be there to wherever you put it. And then go down to properties. Now let's go over to the sharing tab and go to advanced sharing. So to be clear, this is a Windows 10 professional computer. If you have Windows 10 or Windows 11 Home Edition, this might look a little different, but it's very similar. You click on where it says share this folder. Share name is perfect. It's movies. It's going to come up as the same name as the folder, in which case that's exactly what I want. You want to go to permissions and you want to select full control. Allow and then click OK. And then we go ahead and click OK here and OK again. So that's it. Now we're ready to go back to Cody and access this share and see how we can play these great movies. OK, so now that the computer is all set up and sharing that content for Cody to access, let's go open up Cody. And now let's move down to videos. Click on files. Click on Add Videos, then move over and click Browse. We need to add a share here, and the way to do that is to go down to Add Network Location. You need to make sure that the protocol is set to where it is now, Windows Network SMB. Go down to Server Name, and that's where you're going to enter in the IP address that we got from our computer earlier, and we wrote that down. You did, didn't you? <laughs> in my case, it's 192. Dot one six eight dot seven dot one three nine. Again, your address is most likely going to be different, so make sure you write yours down, not mine. Click OK. The next thing we need to do is put that username in there. This is the username for your laptop. I, as I said earlier, you do need to have a username and password. If your laptop doesn't currently have a password, you really should set one for this. It's easy to do, and it makes Kodi work a lot easier. There are workarounds to do without a password, but it's just easier to do it this way. And of course, your laptop is more secure with a password anyway. So in my case, I am going to put in my username and password. After we've entered those, you go ahead and click OK. So we have our username and password in there, and we have the server name in there, and protocol is Windows Network SMB. Just double check on all that, and then now go over and click OK. Now if it pops up just like this and adds this to the list, we've done it exactly right.
but all looks good here. So let's click on that. We can see that movies folder on that laptop from here. You click on that. Don't go into any of the specific movies. Just leave it right here and then move over and click OK. You want to move down to where it says enter a name for this media source. In this case, movies is perfect because that's exactly what's in there. Click OK. Now where it says this directory contains, this is where we want to tell it that there are movies in this location. Cody is capable of playing all sorts of uh, media, movies, music videos, TV shows, uh, all sorts of stuff. So movies is what we have. Click on movies. Next on the list is to choose the information provider. Now this is very cool. This is one of the coolest things about Kodi. It has these scrapers where it will go out and search the internet for information on the files that are in uh, your media source. So let's go ahead and leave that on the movie database Python. Move down here to where it says movies are in a separate folder that match the movie title. That is exactly what we saw earlier. Remember, each of my movies is in a specific folder with the name of the movie. So check that. You can leave all this other stuff blank, no problem. Move over and click OK. Next, it's going to ask you, do you want to refresh the information for all items within this path? And yes, we do, because that's going to actually start that scraping process of um, finding the information on the Internet for the movies that we own. So click yes. You'll see at the top right, it's going to be doing exactly that. It's going to scan the content and you'll see the movies pop up one by one. It's actually downloading images and information uh, that's out there on the Internet about our movies. In our little test case here, we've only got 16 movies in there, so it's going to happen pretty quickly. If you have, you know, tens or 100 plus movies, uh, this will take a little bit of time, could take up to even 15 minutes the first time you do this. But then after that, you know, it's only going to, you know, take just a few seconds. It'll scan right through real quick, see nothing new and proceed. When that goes away, we're done. Everything is in there. It's uh, information is ready for us to look at. And let's go out to the main screen and go all the way up to where it says movies. And you will now see all the different movies that you have. And this screen is going to change a little bit because you know, as you watch some of them, it, you know, you'll see this recently added movies. That's going to be all the ones we just added. Um, and the unwatched movies is going to be all of them again until we watch them. And then it will remove from this list. And then you have some random movies and so on. And then you have genres too. Like you can sort down, you know, into different categories. All of these things are, are done that way. Um, and then collections, like in this case, I have the whole Rocky collection is here and that will show up there. So you can, all sorts of ways to access this content. And to play one of them, you can just go ahead and over and pick one and click on it. Obviously I'll need to blur the content because I don't have the license to show this and don't plan on breaking any rules with YouTube at all. While the movie's playing, you can actually click the up button on the remote to skip ahead 10 minutes at a time, which is kind of a cool feature. See that timeline at the top? Each time I click it, it's going 10 minutes ahead. If you just tap the select button, look at the bottom of the screen, you'll see you have pause button where you can pause the movie, you can play it again, you can go fast forward, rewind, and then you can also stop the movie. Brings you back out to the main screen. Another cool feature you can do is if you long press the select button on the remote, you have multiple options here. One thing you could do is we can add it to favorites. I'll show you that in a second. In fact, let's go ahead and add this one to our favorites too, so I can show you in just a moment what that's all about. Let's go back to Rocky Five and we'll long press that button. This is the feature I wanted to show you. Click on information. This is a very cool page with all sorts of info on here. It'll tell you all the actors that are in the movie and some information about them. You can obviously play the movie from here. You can also play a trailer if you're not sure if you want to watch the movie. And when we click on trailer, watch what happens. Cody's going to automatically tell us that we need an add-on. We need the YouTube add-on to actually play trailers. So let's click on yes, and we'll let that cook for a moment. And it's going to install uh, the YouTube add-on for Cody. It's basically just, you know, it's installing the app, but within Cody. Now that that's done, let's long press Rocky 5 again. Go back into information. Now when we move over to that trailer button, we can click on it. And it will play the trailer right within Cody. 
So you can check that out. You can fast forward through that too if you want to. Again, press the select button, press the stop button, brings us back out there. Let's now move over to the left and go to favorites and I'll show you what we did. When we, when we hover over favorites, now you can see on the right, we have the favorites that we've added. And you can do this for any, any of the movies on your list. You can do this for the TV shows, whatever you have in your media sources, uh, you can add to your favorites. So there you go. One of the very cool things that you can do with Kodi Media Player to play all of your content uh, over the network from your computer or from your uh, NAS device. If you enjoyed anything you saw here today, please go ahead and like the video, subscribe to the channel, and as always, share this and all of your favorite Cord Cutters Alive videos with your friends. This not only helps to get my video shown to more people, it also helps to support the channel. Thanks for watching.